Shabbat Shabbat Tov. This was Shabbat Parshat Shmot 5776. I'm going to share with you a couple of thoughts. Um, in Rabbi Holzer's volume, The Rav, Thinking Aloud, in his first piece on Parshat Shmot, titled Hashem Answers the Cry We Forgot to Ask. Rabbi Soloveitchik asked the following question. It says in the parsha, Vayar Elokim et B'nei Yisrael Vayeda Elokim that uh, Hashem saw the children of Israel and he knew and, and, and God knew. So what was this? What was this in response to? What was this in response to? Do you remember? <coughs> so Bnei Yisrael cried out, right? What is it? What does it say? It says, it says. That happened that the king of Egypt died, and the people sighed from the work, and they cried out, Batal Shavatam El Min Avodah. And their cry, their prayer, their scream for help went up to God from the work. And God heard their outcry. And Hashem remembered the covenant with Abraham, Yitzchak, and Yaakov. And God saw the people of Israel, the children of Israel, and He knew. So Rav Soloveitchik said, what is this God saw and He knew? What does that add that we wouldn't have known otherwise. If that pasuk wasn't there, it wouldn't matter. We would never notice. So Rav Soloveitchik said, there are many forms of enslavement. When people think about slavery, they think about physical slavery. And that's all B'nai Yisrael thought about. That's why it says, they sighed, they groaned from the work. And their cry to God went up just from the work. And as they asked God, save us from all of this hard work. But, and it says, Hashem heard. And he remembered the covenant with Avram, Yitzhak, and Yaakov. Bayar Elohim, God saw. God saw what we didn't see. Vayeda Elohim, and God knew what we didn't know. Because there's another type of slavery, not just physical slavery, there's spiritual slavery. And when a person's in spiritual slavery, he doesn't even realize it person doesn't even realize what bondage is in psychologically and spiritually. And so Rabbi Soloveitchik would say that we would be a most unfortunate people if God had been guided by our prayer. We pray and we think we know better than God. And as Rav Shalom Irish points out, if a person doesn't thank God for what he has before he asks for something different. He's basically saying to God, listen, God, you don't really know how to run the world. I have a better idea. So that's clearly a lack of, of faith in Hashem. First thing a person has to say is, Hashem, thank you for the situation you've given me so that you've inspired me to emunah, to faith in you, moved me to pray to you and connect to you. And that you want me to ask you for something different. Because that's my purpose in this world, is to be able to, to do that. A man's purpose in this world is to pray and to bring God's will into the world. God said, if, we would only be, if God would only be guided by our prayers, we are, we are too short-sighted. 
We are too shallow. We don't even know what we need. And on another occasion, uh, I heard Rabbi Rothwax and Beth Aaron and Tinek uh, quote Rav Soloveitchik about the bracha in the Shmon Esra. Re'ei na ve'onyenu. Re'ei See into our poverty, into our impoverishment, into our suffering. Because we don't even know how far we are from you. We don't even know how distant we are from you. So God, you please see what we, what we don't see. And um, just to give a, a few examples, um, we see this also in davening. We pray to Hashem, in, and there are two versions in Ahavar Abba, Ahavat Olam. We say, Ushvor um, Galuyot Me'al Tzavareinu. Re- break off the yoke of the exile from us. Some versions a- add in ve'ol ha'goyin, and the yoke of the Gentiles. And I think, I, su- I would suggest that there's a difference. The ol ha'galuyot, galut, is most obvious a, a geographical thing, a physical thing. So when we recognize that we are outside of the correct context of the geographical land of Israel. So we pray to God, save us from the, from the exile. But there's also the Ola Goyim, there's the yoke of the nations, which is on us even when we are in the land of Israel. Just look at the world today. Israel is not really a sovereign state because it's always looking over its shoulder. What does the United States say? What is the European Union saying? What is the United Nations saying? So we ask Hashem, save us not only from the physical oppression, but save us also from the psychological and the spiritual oppression of the world. We see this in so many ways. It means about, we don't even know how the Ola Goyim is on us, the yoke of the Goyim, especially when it comes to what ideas have we absorbed, what values have we absorbed. In this time of year, the end of December, the beginning of January, is a time when we really have to think about this, because who can walk down the street and not be somewhat affected by what's going on in the world? If, we f- if, if, if a Torah Jew feels that this, this is a holiday season, He's really missing something. Then he's already he's been he's been tainted by what's going on out there. We we feel like this is a a holiday season. In it's uh, and we never had this problem before, because now that you know it's it's only in the 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 free world that the Jew could even come to such a point, whereas in the old days. From December twenty fifth to January first, it was a it was a dangerous time for the Jew to be out. So dangerous on December twenty fifth, Jews wouldn't even go out to learn Torah, stay home. Because it was a pogrom time, it was a life and death time. Um, but it, even in 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 much more subtle ways, like. I, I I happen to know one rabbi said you're not allowed to listen to the news at all. Putting aside that, and I'm not on the level to say such a thing, but you have to be aware, what are you listening to? Take something as innocuous as the most important thing on the news, right? The weather, right? That's the only thing that really affects everybody immediately. So you want to know the weather. Now, people don't even listen so much because of the smartphone, but if you listen to the weather, the drama of the weather, so it's going to be a bad day today. It's going to be, you know... It's dreary. Oh, I've got bad news for you today, says the weather forecast it, it, forecaster. So the point is, is that what he's communicating is that if something is displeasing to us, this is bad. This is not a weather forecast with faith and trust in God and saying, well, God, if you are giving this weather to millions and millions of people in this area, this must be absolutely the best thing for us because you're always doing the best thing for us. But if we absorb the hidden values 
of what's being said in the weather report, then we are walking around with the Ol HaGoyim, the yoke of the nations, we are walking around in, in a type of spiritual slavery. It's a very subtle thing, actually, to think about. Um, and sometimes it's not so subtle. I saw a catalog, um, I won't mention the name of the company, a Jewish company, um, Shomer Shabbos, the, and it's a technology company, and their catalog is filled with every gadget and every kitchen appliance that you could that you can imagine, and they also have you know the, the kosher phones and and iPods that are loaded with Torah and everything. But when you look at the pictures that they present, they've got every type of Jew with his eyes popping out about this thing and that thing, and this woman wants this, and this girl wants that, and the kids are begging their father, give us this, give us that. It's the gimme, gimme, gimme. I gotta have this, I gotta have that. And there's such an excitement and enthusiasm about all of this physical, material stuff. This is not a, a Jewish way of relating to the physical world. This... You know, I mean, Avi, your brother, said, um, said, Rabbi Nachman said, you have to choose what you get excited about. Because that's what you, the values are. That your kids will see what's important to you by what you get excited about. So it's important to choose what you get excited about. You should get excited about spiritual things. You should get excited about those things that really matter with the and, and the greatest value is something eternal when someone cries over spilt milk when someone gets very excited about some piece of technology unless you you, you know you say this is something that I'm going to use in the service of Hashem to be careful what you get excited about and what and to realize that when, when are we impoverished? When are we enslaved? When are we carrying the yoke of the values of the rest of the world? Rather, we want to be clear about what our values are and carry the true values of Torah forward. May Hashem bless us. May Hashem look and see into our spiritual impoverishment, our spiritual enslavement, and truly bring us May shibud ligeula from enslavement to redemption. Hashtaba agalav zman karib amar amen. Amen. Shabuatov.